It's three degrees. I want to thank you for joining us for Fabric of Family today. We have a great lineup of guests who are going to be with us. We're going to be talking about the subject of children and friendships. We hope you'll be with us as we come back in just a moment. In him, all families are blessed. Join our discussion on Fabric of Family. As I said, we're going to be talking about our children and the friendships that they develop along the way. And this is something that we need to think about as parents because friends definitely have a great influence upon our children. And I have some guests who are going to be with us today. And one of these guests comes from uh, Georgia and the other guest comes from Alabama. And you've probably seen these guests with us in times past. But Charles Abernathy as well as Tyler Gilreath will be discussing uh, the subject matter in just a moment. But before before we uh, go over to the couch and uh, sit down and have this discussion with them about the importance of friends in our children's lives and look at some of the ramifications of that, I want to invite you to watch this next short segment and then we'll be back. Hi, I'm Kevin Rhodes. I preach for the Granbury Street Church of Christ in Cleburne, Texas, and this is Word for the Family. You know, we hear a lot about what's going on in our culture today, a lot of ugliness and things that are very difficult for families. But I wonder if you've thought much about the culture of your family. You know, every group of people creates a culture in which here are certain norms, here's what to be expected. And in your home, you are the one that's gonna decide what the culture of that family is. Is it going to be world friendly as a culture where everything in the world is accepted and put on the television or watched on the internet and that's fine with you because that's who you are? Is it just going to be neutral where you include some good things and you make sure the Bible is there and you have good lessons, but at the same time, there are a lot of things about the world that are there too. And you don't want to say too much because, of course, children need to make up their own minds. Perhaps you're Christian friendly and you want a Christian friendly home. That's very different. That's where you want to make sure your children are going to church all the time, they're ready for Bible class, and that they understand that there are different standards that they're held accountable to. If you look at all of these things in a world-friendly culture, you let evolutionary thought and religious pluralism rule, morals are considered relative or just too restraining, discipline that you would do, nah, that doesn't matter that much, you're too enlightened for that. Well, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, don't love the world, don't fall into that pattern. If you're part of a neutral culture as a family, maybe you just accept your children's choices entirely without censure. They want to do something, they make up their own minds, and you don't ever tell them that they're wrong. Maybe you expect other people in society to handle a little bit of your responsibilities. You're happy to shove those off into society, or there are people that want to do this, so I don't need to have to worry about it. A lot of times then people don't give any attention to discipline in those situations. And the children, they know, they respond to other people better. Proverbs 29 verse 15 says, though, we need to make sure we're the ones who are disciplining them and take it seriously. In a Christian friendly culture, you attend worship, do so regularly. The parents are involved in the church to some degree. There are Christian expectations about what goes on in that home, and you have discipline as a goal. Joshua 24 verse 15 may even be up in your home. But you know, that's not the same thing as having a Christ-centered culture. We need to make sure as parents that it's not just about us and about going to church. It's about Jesus Christ in our lives in our children's lives. And so that in all that we do, we are raising these people who recognize Jesus, who know Jesus, and are living for Jesus. So don't just be Christian-centered, be Christ-centered. Make Him the focal point of all that you do. Your children will be better and they will love you for it. And guess what? They will show because that's the love of God at work in their hearts through your heart. I'm Kevin Rhodes, and this has been Word for the Family. Back to you, Barry. 
thank you for being a part of our discussion panel today. And uh, we want you to, to feel like you're just uh, kind of sitting in with us today and uh, observing some of the uh, discussion that's going to take place. I have with me uh, Charles Abernathy, who preaches for the Chisholm Hills Church of Christ in Florence, Alabama as well as Tyler Gilreath, who preaches for the Riverbend Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. Gentlemen, it's good to have you back with us again to talk about another important uh, subject that is related to our families. And we're going to do it from a biblical perspective, as we always do on Fabric of Family. And uh, one subject matter that, that comes up uh, oftentimes on this program is children, because children are, are so much a part of family. And today in this program, I want us to, to think about children as it relates to friendships and how children develop relationships and uh, friendships and what are some pitfalls that, that we as parents might want to uh, be mindful of as our children grow and develop. So I want to give this first question to Tyler and to, to, to give us uh, your perspective on, on how uh, children initiate friendships. How does this take place? Uh, how are these relationships developed as we go throughout the years? You know, it, it starts out uh, pretty funny. Uh, you know, kids, you know, when they're elementary school, preschool, you know, friendships start over, can you help me open this chocolate milk, you know, at the lunch table? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, from there, you know, they move into middle school and, you know, they start to share a lot of common interests and hobbies and, uh, you know, kids get bands and they start playing in bands together. And, uh, and you know, when they go into high school, uh, there's a little more of a, a social status that comes into play yeah. uh, with popularity and, and if you're this popular you can be friends with yeah. these people and if you're not you can be friends with these people. Um, but you know once uh, people hit uh, the college years they begin to see uh, you know who are their real friends and, and why are they their real friends and when we become adults you know we uh, once we have close friends we, we generally keep them. Uh, for so, long so our of time. perspective of friendship changes. Absolutely. Yes. From you know very early in life to very late in life, and some of that change is due to what, Charles? I mean, I, uh, maturity. Maturity. You know, you know. I think uh, uh, just thinking about the kid, the friends you developed early on, versus the friends we have now. It's just a different standard that we mm. develop those friendships. I mean, growing up, you know playground friends. Uh, I played a lot of sports, so a lot of my friends were, were athletes. Uh, you know, those kind of friends I don't, I don't much have anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I, I develop friendship now based on as I've matured, you know, is this person going to be there for me during difficult days or moments? Yeah. You know, are they going to tell me what I need to hear not, or what I, what I need to hear, not necessarily what I want to hear? You know, be honest with me. Uh, are they going to be kind and forgiving? I mean, you just develop mm. friendship uh, in a different way as you as you mature, as you get older. Well, I think also how that uh, oftentimes when friendships are initiated, it is a lot of times superficial, uh, superficial things like you know Tyler brought up. You know, would you help me open my milk carton? I mean, well, okay, yeah. And then you know, next day you sit with the same person at school and. Uh, but, you know, as, as we grow older, uh, these things become a little more uh, concrete as far as how we, we choose friends. You know, from a parenting perspective, how concerned should we be about the friends that our children choose? And I mean, why? I, I, well, I'm, I'm not an overbearing parent, I wouldn't think, and, but I am involved in the process. And talking about how relationships are initiated. I guess looking at it from the perspective of the parent, sometimes those relationships are initiated by the parent. You know, introducing kids to other kids that maybe have the same belief, same foundation, uh, same, uh, you know, family dynamics, um, but, but not being overbearing to the point that you choose every friend your, your child has. That would, that would not be healthy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron, and uh, just a general principle that you know says, hey, you know, your friends can make you better, uh, but they can also make you worse. 
And so, uh, especially as you know, the, the child begins to get older and develops spirituality, uh, we have to be, I think, very, very mindful about uh, our kids' friends and are they going to help increase their spirituality or are they going to you know, be a detriment to their spirituality? Yeah, and, and there's somewhat of a fine line there that you, as a parent, have to juggle uh, because of the fact that, you know, not everyone is going to be on the same spiritual level as your child may be, and uh, that person that they befriend may be a s stronger spiritually, but they also may be weaker, and, you know, uh, how do we handle that as parents, you know? Well, I mean... You have to remember, God God gave kids parents. I mean, it's not left up to the kids uh, from an early age, even as they get a little older, to make all of those decisions, to, to, to just naturally think that they're, yeah. they are where they need to be and they're the most mature they will ever be and they're going to just make the right decisions. We all made bad decisions growing up. I mean, I think that's part of it, but we had parents who were guiding us in that process. And I, I think that we have to remember that God God gave those kids parents I, I remember someone saying today God has lent me a soul tomorrow I must return it prepared for eternity I mean we we have a responsibility as parents you know like I said earlier we don't want to be overbearing to the point where we're trying to dictate every path our children are on we've got to leave that up to them in some ways but we sure can give them guidance and wisdom and Put them in the right direction. Absolutely. What are some things that we can look for as parents as we seek to guide our children along this avenue? Uh, as far as qualities or traits that uh, we ought to seek out in those whom we would befriend? Well, you know, when they're very, very young, uh, you're looking at probably different qualities. You know, are they nice to my kids? Are they, are they bullying? Are they going to hurt my children, you know, physically? Uh, uh, but, you know, when they get older, I would think, you know, that the, 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 the standard would probably change a little bit and would be uh, things of uh, more serious nature, uh, such as, you know, uh, are they going to influence my child to drink alcohol and to party and to live a riotous type life? Uh, or or they uh, maybe just a friend who... Uh, is just a good friend and they're there for them and my child maybe can influence them, you know. Uh, and really you know, good. some kids, they're followers. They're followers and they need more of that parental uh, involvement in that phase of their life. And, and then, then some children, they're leaders and it, it doesn't matter what the group's going to do, they're going to do what they think they ought to do. So our children are going to be different and so we can't give a cookie cutter pattern out and say this is exactly the way you as a parent need to handle your child. As a parent I need to recognize my children's weaknesses. Are they prone to be influenced by others? Uh, or my child's strengths, is my child more prone to be a leader and to care less what someone else is trying to pressure them into doing? Are they going to do what's, what's right? And so, you know, as parents, we just have to use some judgment in this matter as well. You know, I, we, we've all heard that uh, famous phrase, it, it takes a village. And, and that phrase is good to, to a point. But there has to be parameters and boundaries in a village. In a village, there are all kinds of people. And as a, as a parent, you don't want to just let your kid or child loose in the village and expect the village to do mm -hmm. for that child what, it, what needs to be done. No, no, God gave that child to you and to me and, and, and to Tyler. And so we've got the responsibility. As long as we understand in the village, there are parameters, there are boundaries, and yeah. so, so you have to be very careful. You just can't yeah. let you just can't yeah. let a kid kid go and without any kind of wisdom. And like you sure. said, some are leaders and some are followers, right. and 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 making sure we understand that about the direction our kids will go in. Yeah, I mean, if you turn your, your, your kid over to the village, don't be surprised when your kid becomes like the villagers. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, exactly right. You know, so, yeah, that, that's an excellent point and, and something that, that we need to consider as parents. Tyler? Yeah, there are some villages you wouldn't want to turn your kid uh, <laughs> loose in, and then there's some that you wouldn't mind. mind. Uh, but uh, well, I, me, I echo everything you said. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you, is it okay then for our children to have uh, worldly friends? What's your thought on that? 
I mean, a absolutely. I, okay. I think... Uh, and, and we recognize there's different degrees of friendship, right? Right, right. I mean, motive, what's, what, what is your child's motive mm -hmm. for wanting to be a friend? Is it just simply friendship? They have things in common, mm -hmm. uh, similar likes, dislikes. Um, but if the motive is, you know, I like the things this person's doing, it's not necessarily the standard I'm following. It's more appealing. It's intriguing. Uh, man, you, you have to be you have to be careful there. I think. And so, uh, I, th I think one thing I, I, I often hear people, in reference to Jesus, talk about how he had friends of all kinds. Well, it's true that he did mix and mingle with people, but who were his friends? The right. ones he chose. Those were the people who had the same standard, the same mentality about God, about God's plan, about God's word. And Jesus selected those friends wisely. He selected the people who would come in closer. There's nothing wrong, certainly, with having friends who are who are worldly, so to speak, or you know, and and, and you can influence them. I, I understand that, and and have an impact on them for for the good. But let's not be naive and just right. thinking that you just have to understand the motive, not to think that just everything's going to be okay. Yeah, when when the child's at home, it's a good training ground for uh, their adulthood because you know, as adults and also as teenagers. Hard, it's hard to uh, to do that if you're not ever around worldly people, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's very important. Yeah, he had his close knit group, but he also was in the world, and he 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 mixed, he mingled, he interacted, he had compassion, grace, he taught, mm -hmm. he encouraged, he led a life that was a great example before worldly people, but the people he spent the majority of his time with were those close knit. Was that close knit group? Right. Excellent points. We're going to take a break here, and uh, we're going to go and watch a segment of Word for the Family. And the speaker today for this segment is Jameson Stewart. So let's watch that together, and then we'll come back and tie up our loose ends here. And today, as new fathers, or those who have been fathers for a little while, I'd like us to take a look at the subject of love, and the love that we're to have towards our families, towards our wives, towards our children. If you have your Bible handy, turn to Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse 25. Ephesians 5 verse 25 reads, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In your relationship with your wife, when you become a new father, things are going to change. Um, in the past, you've been used to it just being you and your wife everywhere you go, whether it's events that you go to, vacations, travel, things like that. It's always just been you and her. So now that you have children introduced into the mix, things will change a little bit. Um, maybe your child, when they're quite young, will sleep in the same room with you. They may even sleep in the bed with you. Things are going to change in your relationship. But Paul tells us here in Ephesians chapter 5 that we're to love our wives, even as Christ also loves the church. So be sure and love your wife, even though your relationship will undergo some changes. And also in regards to your children, always be sure and love your children as well. Be sure and take the time, spend time with them, whether you've had a really long day at work, uh, maybe things didn't go quite how you thought they would that day, always be sure and take time to spend with your children as well. This has been a word for the family. Well, we're back to finish up our panel discussion with Tyler Gilreath of the Riverbend Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia, and Charles Abernathy, uh, the uh, minister for the Chisholm Hills Church of Christ in Florence, Alabama. Uh, gentlemen, we're talking about uh, friends and uh, children and, and how we as parents are involved in that process. And, and I want to go to you uh, first, Charles, uh, because I want to see what your thoughts are regarding uh, this particular question. You know, if a parent feels like or believes that their child's making some poor choices regarding friends, I mean, what can, a, what can a parent do? I mean, obviously, we can't be around our kids 24-7, but what can we do uh, to help funnel our children in the right direction or, or down the right path? You know, I think one of the things that comes to mind is communication. 
I mean, as a parent, you may see something that your child does not see. Maybe there are obvious reasons they don't see it. Popularity, they like the fact that there's a connection with this particular uh, friend. Uh, they might not see that this friend is possibly using them for another means, another way to get what he or she wants. Um, and as a parent, you may see that. But the only way your child may ever understand that or come to fully uh, appreciate it, and that's possibly down the road, but to fully appreciate it is by communicating. Communicate what you see, what you feel, what you think. Uh, don't just be naive or assume that our, your child, my child, just automatically knows what we're thinking and our displeasure with this situation. Um, and, and there are obvious uh, warning signs, I think, that, that we pick up on. There are, there are alerts that, that kind of flash, and we pick up on that. We say, okay, we see that. That makes us concerned. But communicate. Communicate that to your children. All right. So talk with your kids. Uh, you know, sit down with your kids. Make sure they understand what your concerns are. Uh, anything else, Tyler? <laughs> well, if it gets really bad, you can take your kid to the local jail and say, you look, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it may take uh, something serious like that. I was kind of joking, but something serious like that for them to see uh, the path they're going down is, is a treacherous path. It's not a good path. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Go ahead, Charles. Well, I just, it, it's funny that Tyler brings that up. That actually happened to me and you two, to, and two of jail? my friends yeah, when we were, you were when jail. we were younger. Yes. He, you he didn't tell me this no, when we started the program. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we were really young and we, had, you we had some things that we had done that were not good. And uh, the other two guys that are... Um, that were with me at the time. Uh, one of them is a state trooper in the state of Missouri, in the Boot Hill of Missouri, and the other is the chief of police in Crothersville, Missouri. Okay. And I'm a preacher, so. We, yeah. But but now this our, is when you were kids. Yeah, this is when we were kids, and so yeah. so when we were kids, he did that. But I, I want to tell you that is an eye-opening thing. We 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 tease about it, mm. but I want to tell you I don't think any of us wanted that as a path for our life. Now we were being kids as they might say, but understanding that y there are consequences for actions and those consequences can lead you down a road you do not want to go, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That, that, that yeah. is so eye-opening and my parents were not even aware of that until mm -hmm. the chief of police in our little town told my parents what he did yeah. and mm -hmm. they fully agreed with it. What do you think about a parent just saying, look, uh, you're not going to be able to associate with this person anymore because of what I've come to learn regarding their behavior and uh, reputation and uh, your uh, weakness in being able to be influenced by such. What, what do you think? Is that okay? Not okay? Well, I mean, the parent obviously has the final call. Uh, it may actually take, you know, removing them from that location. It, you know, once that friendship is, is made, it might be kind of difficult to, to govern that, you know, if they're still around that person at school or whatever, you may have to physically, you know, move the child from that situation. Yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, I think it's okay to do. Mm -hmm. uh, as a parent, I mean, you're not supposed to be the best friend all of the time. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're supposed to be the parent. Yeah. And sometimes that means making difficult decisions and it, and it, you, it, you don't always make the right decisions, what, but you try. Right. You try to make the right decisions. Yeah, and if it's in the best, it's kind of like what we were mentioning earlier, motive. Why does my child want to be friends with this particular person? Well, the same would be true of, of parents, right? What What is my motive for not wanting my child to be friends with this person? Is it because it's detrimental, it's harmful, uh, it could be abusive, whatever the case may be, or is it just... I just don't like them. I yeah. mean, uh, assess the motive, I think, would be important mm -hmm. as well. And then lastly, as we think about Jesus, he's our perfect example in everything. What are some traits or qualities in the Lord that we need to try and reproduce those traits and qualities in our children as it relates to friendship? What are some things that come to mind? Well, Jesus uh, was always the influencer. Uh, mm -hmm. He was always the one who... Uh, would have just the right thing to say, and it was always of a spiritual nature. 
Uh, and Jesus was always looking to bring souls with him along the way. So try to teach our children not to be concerned with what others think of them if they don't go along with the crowd. Because Jesus never did. He wasn't worried about that. I mean, he was going to do what's right, whether everyone went along with him or whether no one went along with him. Correct? That's right. That's right. He, he wasn't there to uh, be the most popular person in town. Although he became very popular, mm -hmm. uh, but he was there to uh, do the will of the Father. And, and he always tried to bring people with him along the way. And that's something we can, you know, try to teach our kids that uh, they have a special opportunity to influence uh, very... Uh, influential young people mm -hmm. uh, to uh, okay. get to know the Lord. And Charles, we got about uh, 25 seconds left. What, do you, what are some thoughts? Well, I think what we pointed out, he was not the, he was not normal for society, but it was okay because he still had friends, mm -hmm. and he chose well. He chose yeah. well. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes uh, quality is better than quantity. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us on Fabric of Family today, and I think the things we've talked about hopefully can help some parents as well as young people who are watching the program today. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. Heavenly song, thank you for viewing the Fabric song, of Family. Flooding my soul with if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is 1031 Hermitage Drive in Florence, Alabama, 35630. Or you may contact us at our website, jhcc.org. That's jhcc.org. Or you can call us at 256-764-6291. That's 256-764-6291. Our hope and prayer is to bring you and your family closer to God. Our time goes by so quickly on Fabric of Family. At least we feel that way, and we hope that you feel that way as well. I thank you for joining us each and every week for this program, and, and we hope that this is a program that is building you up in the most holy faith and helping your family to be what God would want it to be. If you would like to contact us, if you have any questions whatsoever, maybe if you have a comment about a, a program that we've done in the past or even a suggestion of a program you'd like to see in the future, please feel free to contact us at the Jackson Heights Church of Christ. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Barry Gilreath, Jr., your host, wishing you and your family a wonderful week. Selected. Focus. Selected. Screen recording.